Alright guys, today we're going to have a hands-on look at iOS 6.0 Beta 2 and this is running on the new iPad 3. Um, Apple just calls it the iPad, but I call it the iPad 3 because it is the third generation of the iPad, but that's the hardware that we're running this on. So the main thing with iOS 6 Beta are several new features within the OS itself. A quick look at the settings application will show the new Do Not Disturb feature, the first thing that we're going to look at and it's a really nice consideration because you can schedule quiet time now whenever quiet time is scheduled um, here I'm just going to set it from let's give you an example 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. so that we fall within the date range and if you notice right up here you'll see the moon the crescent moon symbol and that means quiet time is enabled or do not disturb as Apple calls it um, the repeated calls option here, it says right here when enabled a second FaceTime call from the same person uh, will not be silenced if it's within three minutes and on the iPhone this applies to voice calls. And right here, um, one of the curious things about iOS 6 is you can pick a certain group to allow from, um, basically like a VIP list, anybody within this group can uh, go through even if do not disturb is on. And down here you see groups and it says all contacts. But upon inspection within the contacts app itself, there is no way to put contacts within groups. Um, you can only edit, you know, certain the regular standard fields uh, for a set contacts. But I don't see any clear uh, group setting in there where you can organize them into groups. Although that is a feature I've long wanted within iOS. But that's a general overview of the Do Not Disturb feature which I think is pretty nice because you don't want to get notifications at certain times at night and of course they've added the Facebook login um, just like they've had the Twitter login for iOS 5 so applications can integrate more closely with Facebook in addition to Twitter which has been there like I said since the last OS iteration now one thing that they've taken a, a page out of uh, Blackberry and Android's book is the new privacy option and here it clearly lists all applications who request um, certain things and you can turn off applications. For instance, I have Photoshop Express, Twitter, and WordPress accessing my photos, but if I don't want one of these applications to access my photos anymore, then a quick slider turns it right off. And then they are no longer allowed access to them. And you can do the same thing for reminders, calendars, contacts, and location services as well, just to better control what applications see what data about you. And this is, once again, just a general overview of the Do Not Disturb feature, and you can turn it off for good right here within a uh, new settings button, right within the general settings um, application. And so that's an overview of some of the new setting features. Um, one of the new highlights within the new iOS 6 is the use of Apple Maps versus Google Maps. And Apple Maps, it's, it's it's not pretty, honestly. I mean, maps you wouldn't expect them to be. Um, I don't know if this is because it's still in beta or if it just hasn't been implemented yet, but they don't have any um, sort of terrain view uh, by default. Now, you can do a satellite view, but oh, unless they just added it during my initial test, I wasn't too impressed with it. Although it is nice because you can sort of give a 3D rendition of a map and I'm not sure if Google Maps could do that or not but it will natively support 3D hence the 3D button right here at the bottom of the screen and I'm sure buildings and skyscrapers and such will come later I'm just going to go back to the standard view here and so you can see you can get more of a lateral view of it and right up here with the directions, Siri will actually, by the way, Siri is in iOS 6 now, obviously, and Siri will give you turn-by-turn -turn directions to somewhere now. Um, for instance, I'm going to go to my location and get directions to, let's see, let's go to McDonald's. And upon clicking start, Siri starts to rattle off the directions. I'm obviously not in the car or anything, but I have tested this, and the turn-by-turn -turn direction feature is very good. However, 
it does get a little bit annoying at times, especially if you have to like go around a turnpike or something because it'll rattle off one direction and then three seconds later tell you to continue to take a ride or something. And I think Apple could tweak that just a little better to where they don't just keep throwing directions at you within a like a ten second interval. But that's just my thoughts on the turn by turn direction feature at the moment. So that's a general overview of the maps feature. And like I said, 3D doesn't really work at the moment on this. Um, like I said, it's probably just a beta thing. Um, you know, it's a beta. It's not expected to be quite like the real thing yet. But so far, I like the new maps feature. Um, like I said, Siri is on the new iPad. And Siri, Siri is kind of hit and miss with me, honestly. Um, I don't use it very much because I don't like talking to myself but it can work with the Bluetooth headset and just to give you an example of how they minified Siri um, it's, it's similar to the way they did a notification center to slide to unlock they just made it smaller and that's Siri and you can see it's responding very well to my voice even from this distance I'm about I'm a foot and a half from the iPad right now behind a pane of glass and it still responds to my voice very well um, one thing I do notice is a weakness with Siri though is well here's a demonstration that I used the other day Siri how tall is LeBron James let's see LeBron James is six foot eight oh well it works now um, the other day when I tried this they must have updated something on the back end or actually I tried this with beta one but it couldn't tell me it said let me do a web search for you and upon uh, searching it on Google, uh, it came out this very, very bold print at the very top above all the search results, his exact height. Which, interestingly enough, it said it was he was 6'1", but um, here apparently they can now pull that information. And of course the usual Siri features apply, like um, Siri, compare uh, Friday's closing costs of Apple Corporation with Microsoft Corporation. This is a feature I use all the time just to compare uh, companies. Okay, here's a place matching Apple Incorporated. It's a little ways from you. Okay, so that's an example of Siri completely failing to do a certain task. But for the most part, Siri is pretty good with most things. I just never really use that feature. Um, now, one of the newer applications that they added to iOS 6 beta is this clock feature. Now, there are tons of clocks on the App Store for... Um, iOS, but Apple just for some reason felt the need to add their own. And by default, these are, I haven't really messed with any settings in this application. These are the default clocks. And clicking one brings it full screen. And interestingly enough, even though Yahoo is completely failing as a company, per the last couple of posts on our website at siliconnews.com with the hyphen in between silicon and news, um, Apple is still using Yahoo as a data source for their weather data which I mean I hate that because Yahoo's weather data is almost always wrong you know be it a, a past present or future um, especially in my area but Apple insists on using them as their uh, weather data source um, which is where the 88 degrees is coming from right now it says 88 degrees is probably 95 outside that's typically how inaccurate Yahoo's uh, weather information is but other than that the clock feature is pretty underwhelming for the most part, um, I think it could have been done a little bit better. But if you've never seen a home integration system that allows these to be mounted into the wall, the clock feature is the perfect application to, if you're not using your iPad for really anything else, but it's it's there. But other than that, I don't really have a whole lot of use for the clock myself, but I'm sure um, your experience may vary. But other than that, those are the main features of iOS 6 beta. Um, like I said, I'm, this is uh, Beta 2, and most of my hands-on testing was done with Beta 1, but Beta 2 really just brought bug fixes. Um, one of the nastiest bugs that I've seen within iOS Beta 2 is what has to do with these um, these covers. Every now and then I'll open up the cover, and the iPad will completely crash, and I'll actually have to hold down the Sleep and Home button to completely hard reset the entire iPad to get it to come back to life. Um, it's a nasty bug. I'm sure it has something to do with um, Apple's power management within the new OS. 
And other than that, the only other bug I've seen is Safari completely crashes and burns whenever I try to close a PDF that's been opened within one of the tabs. But with the exception of those bugs, iOS 6 Beta 2 is looking good. Um, still has a little bit of work to do on certain things. And like I said, I'm not really sure what this... Uh, what these groups are and how to add them or anything like that that might just be an unimplemented feature and one of my buddies who is brave enough to run this on his iPhone said that the new uh, passport I think that's the name of the app the new passport app you know doesn't really do anything either but I'm sure those are features to come and so far iOS 6 beta 2 is looking good and that's it thanks for watching guys